What's up, everybody? It's Henry at Morning Blues. Good morning. It's Sunday. You're watching this Monday. About a couple of hours before the first football game starts at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. NFL weekend, you always got to get a couple of hours of wrenching in before you get to sit down and relax and watch the whole day of NFL action. I bet with my son a dollar a game with the spread and the over and under. So far, I'm up, uh, I'm down two dollars. A little bit of fun between uh, father and son rivalry. Uh, my buddy uh, Scott, my neighbor, as you know, gave me his uh, snowblower for me to work on. Uh, he asked me what the total was, and I says, I'm just gonna charge it for the carburetor and the fuel line. The uh, labor's free, that's right, free. So, you know, I think I'll charge him like $25 or something, and he's more than happy. Um, I was looking at the snowblower since he's coming to get it. If you take a look at the uh, snowshoes over here, right? It's like an inch off the ground on this side, and it's at the absolute lowest setting. So basically his scraper bar is scraping the ground before the snowshoes do it, you know? Same goes on the other side. So I think these are uh, half inch bolts. So I'm just gonna, uh, it's on level ground right now. So I'm just gonna loosen these bolts, they're carriage bolts, and just make sure that they're touching the ground here, see? Making sure they're touching the ground here, see? This side is touching the ground, and this side is not. So uh, I'm gonna loosen that up and tighten that up too. If I have time, uh, which I think I should, I'm gonna be working on this one. This is uh, one of the remaining two out of the seven from Motherload 27 where I got seven free push mowers. Uh, five of them have already been fixed and this one and another one back there, the Troy built, the one that I pulled the uh, pull rope and uh, it pulled out of my hand, wrapped around the handle and hit me in the right breast. That one. I've been putting that one off because it drew first blood on me. You know what I mean? It hurt me. So I'm going to take that one. I'm going to tackle that one last. Um, I found this in the back. It's one of those uh, flywheel brake magneto kill assemblies. For this one that had a sheer keyway, which I fixed with my friend Bill Martini, this is missing a screw here, see? So if I wanted to get this engine running, I'd have to install that uh, new brake assembly there for the flywheel. But this is a nice mower. It's a big one, you know? It's a Craftsman, but if you guys had have a uh, orange one that looks just like this, it has Husqvarna stickers all around. So it's an AYP product, so Craftsman and Husqvarna, they all look alike. Uh, from what I remember when I first got this, it starts, no problem. Auto choke too, no primer bulb. It has a cable here, but as you can see, it's being held on by just a nail. So I have to do something about that. So that's the bail handle assembly and it works just fine. The problem with this one is it has three cables. One cable is missing from this side over here. This one is for the engagement for the mower rear discharge door. You know, when you have the bag on, it goes up and it clicks on this apparatus here to allow the door to stay open. Then there's a handle or a cable that you pull to disengage it so that the door comes back down again by itself. Completely unnecessary, you know? The more moving parts, the worse it is. So since I this cable is broken, you don't really need it since I don't have a bagger anyway. I'm gonna remove this apparatus later because you don't need it. The other issue I have is the drive engagement cable going from the front wheel self-propulsion. Goes through here and it's supposed to come out here. As you can see, there is no cable coming out of here. So I need a PTO drive engagement cable for this, which I do not have. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about it. I'll look in my bag of parts and see if I can fabricate one, but 
Uh, I'm thinking that if the cable's missing, that's probably the reason why um, he stopped using it or threw it away or something. Maybe the transmission works just fine, just need a new cable. That's a possibility, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna fix this and make sure it's all level. And Scott will come pick it up and then we'll get to work on this one. And there goes Scott with the snowblower. We had a nice long conversation and uh, I only charged him $25. I only charged him $15 for the um, carburetor and $10 for the fuel line. I didn't charge him for any labor. That's it, $25. But uh, he just thought that that was too cheap and I says I wouldn't take money because of the labor. He's my friend. So he went to the store and he bought me stuff that he knows that I like. Energy drinks, soda pop, some Gatorade. That was very nice of him. So, looks like we have to get to this. So as you can see, I found a uh, screw and a nut. Put it around here. Oh, wait a minute. Now the cable just broke. Look at that. Is that a kick in the balls or what? That sucks. So now I need new cables for this. I think I'm gonna take out all the cables since none of them seem to work. I'm gonna take this cable out. I'm gonna take this apparatus out. I'm gonna pull all these cables out because they're no good. None of them are, right? But then look. Um, Maybe I can find a cable to engage the flywheel brake and ignition kill or magneto kill. But then I need a I need a handle. I need a handle to engage the drive eventually, right? And look, there are no holes on the inside for the bottom one like this, right? Looks like they're the outer kind. I think I might have a handle that looks like that where it goes on the outside, you know? But nevertheless, I still have to check the model number, look at the parts diagram, and see if I can find just the drive cable. And I think I could, I think I could fabricate the um, bail handle. And I need to also look for the drive handle too. You know, um, you guys remember that green lawn boy that I had the other day? Used the engine to put on that Murray um, little sports car looking push mower. Well, I kept the handle and the cables were good on it. So I'm gonna go take a look and see if that would work um, and retrofit it to work on this. But in the meantime, let me just take all these cables out so I'm not confused. So after taking apart this area here so I can get a better look, as you guys saw in time lapse, right? The, uh, I took off the wheel. Well, first I, I took the cover off and I tried to turn the pulley by hand, right? And so it was freewheeling up to a point where it would stop, like it was seized on the inside and it wouldn't turn any of the wheels, right? Also, it was missing the belt. So I think the guy took the belt off and then when I took the wheel off, 
it was missing the gears. So the guy obviously had a seized transmission and still wanted it to uh, move freely. So he took the belt off, right? And um, he took the gears out of both sides. So uh, this transmission is done, Ski! So the transmission's done, Ski. You put the cover back on. The wheels do freewheel and they're in pretty good shape, you know? Um, these wheels could actually be used for a future project, but you know what? I I don't, I don't really want to deal so much with uh, push mowers anymore. You know what I mean? It's a lot of work to get a, a little bit of money is is not worth the time. So I'm just going to sell this as a push mower, a big one. You know, uh, I took all the cables off, as you can see, right? Um, and I had a brand new bail cable, brake cable, right? But it didn't, the holes didn't fit this particular handle. So I measured how much tension I would need to have this completely straight, pulling this closed. And I measured a hole here. Did a self-tapping screw to get the, uh, took a hole punch, made a dent there so I, so I know that the self-tapping screw would, would be right there at that exact mark put the self-tapping screw in there to get the hole started. Then I drilled it with another drill bit to make it bigger. Then another bigger drill bit that fit the diameter of this little stopper thing that goes in there. So uh, it was still a little loose because I think the hole I drilled was a little bit too big. So I put some electrical tape around it to hold it. And now, uh, as you can see, it stretches the cable straight and engages the brake and disengages the brake. So now, this is a push mower. Pretty good one at that. It didn't have the bag anyway, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's, uh, let's give this a start and see if it at least works as a push mower. starts up just fine, but doesn't it seem like it's still choking, you know what I mean? Now it sounds good. Now it sounds good, but I bet you the carburetor needs a little attention. Let's take off this uh, let's take off this cover and just take a peek at what's going on here. My uh, past few quantums it was missing the choke spring. Ooh, clean. Okay, it has the choke spring. Even though it seems, oh, you know what? This choke flap is bent. And this spring seems very loose, very loose. I might have to tighten this spring And this choke flap is bent. Let's see. Let's try to pull this choke flap out. Or like they say in Canada. Oh. Actually, now that I look at it, it's fine. And I just put it in wrong.
put it in wrong again. How the hell did that go? How odd is that? How did that happen? I'm gonna have to figure this out. So I got the choke flap figured out. And this spring here, see, it is so loose. So I'm pulling it to about here, hooking it there so that the tension is tighter. Blew the holes out a little bit because it does run pretty well, right? So that runs good. Uh, I'm gonna put that stuff back. And I'm gonna spray some kind of adhesive on this to get that stuff back on again. Just put that cover on. Little carb spray to clean this area. Not area, area. Clean the back of that. Spray some stuff. Put the sticker there. I got some 3M spray trim adhesive. Do a little bit of a coating there, get it nice and uh, saturated. And just slap that baby on there. <laughs> it's already sticky. And then give this a hose down. Look at that give it a hose down right i mean the, the deck is in good shape it's just dirty you know what i mean man why do you small engine repair shops stick crap on the machines you think the owner wants that there you know what i mean i mean can't you stick it somewhere else where it's not so hard to take off you know it's annoying if i brought my machine to your place and you did that to my mower I wouldn't be bringing it back to you again I mean Jesus why don't you stick it like here on that sticker you know what I mean why do you have to put it there anyway this is a good mower you know what I mean this is a good mower it was very expensive when it was new it's a shame that the transmission's busted and you can't get it to work but like I said, it was free, and it doesn't have a bag, which takes a lot away from it, you know? Uh, I probably won't sell this this year anyway, because uh, I've got 15 mowers that are ready to go, but not many bites whatsoever, you know? I think when the leaves come down a little bit more, I might be able to sell a few that have baggers, and the others, I'll probably just end up racking them and stacking them in my shed after I take the snow blowers out for the winter. So uh, this will probably sell next year sometime, right before uh, you know spring starts. You know, people start thinking about lawnmowers again. Probably be able to sell quite a bit at that time. You know, and maybe by then, I'll have a bag for this because they are pretty common. You know, when I find other picks and stuff, maybe I'll find a bad machine that has a bag around that would probably fit this. But this is a very good mower. It's big, you know, and strong. You know, you can just tell just from pulling on it and uh, it running. It's a, it's a good engine, uh, oil's good, and it doesn't have much um, gas in it too, so which is good. I think I'll use the remainder of this gas and just do the side of my uh, house over here right now. But um, straightened out all the wires, figured out that the self-propulsion probably doesn't work after all, so that negates my uh, needing to find a handle for the engagement and buy cables because, you know, it's just essentially just a push mower now but uh, like I said it didn't have a back anyway so it, it's a good machine though it really is it's a high wheel and uh, it's in great shape you know so who knows well it works and uh, we'll keep it in the back and maybe rack them and stack them for next spring but uh, works just fine
Uh, thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. I'm going to run inside. It wasn't that bad today, see? So I think I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try the second product that I got from my friends over at Joe's Hand Cleaner in Yukon, Oklahoma. Thanks Mindy Kern for sending the uh, products to me for me to try. And uh, these are hand and surface quick wipes. Orange in color, pull one out nice and conveniently. Mmm, smells very nice. Smells like orange candy. It's, uh, the wipes are um, rough so that it, you can wipe the dirt off your hands very easily, it gets the dirt off very easily. It's not like uh, baby wipes where it's really soft, you know what I mean? It has a rough consistency, not so much like sandpaper, but enough to get the dirt off your fingers and your fingernails. And uh, like I said, most of, so most of the hand cleaners that I've tried, it stinks in terms of aroma, you know, the way it smells. But they've uh, fixed that lately. Um, most of the stuff smells very nice now. All you have to do is put a little bit of fragrance in it, you know what I mean? But this seems to work very nice at that. I don't even have to wash my hands now. I can just jump right into my white sheets and go to bed and not worry about uh, getting my sheets all dirty. No, my wife would kill me if I jumped into bed right now, but uh, it's about uh, one o'clock now, almost ready for the first uh, football game of the day. And uh, how about those Cowboys last week? Huh? I just, I couldn't believe that they, they won by one point, you know? And uh, I was selling my white outdoors tractor at that time too. So I, I missed everything, but I saw the replays, you know, and it looked like Jerry Jones and the Cowboys just won the Super Bowl, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks a lot again to uh, Joe's Hand Cleaner in Yukon, Oklahoma. Go check them out over at joeshandcleaner.com. And uh, they got some great products here for us ranchers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. I'm Andy from Jericho. See you guys, guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Blowers.